the college basketball experience conference championship futures episode on the sports gambling podcast network is brought to you by cut cut is a peer to peer social betting platform. That's us based and available in 40 different States. Head to cut.com. That's K U T T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pickup for a chance to win a th- uh, I'm sorry, a hundred times the amount of money you enter uh, in NBA, NHL, college basketball, and they have much, much more. Sign up today using the promo code SGPN to get a hundred percent deposit match. We're also brought to you by Champs. Run your own March Madness pool and enter Champs Free Bracket Contest for a chance to win a thousand dollars. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs to enter today. We're also brought to you by a Hall of Fame bets. Yes, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get fifty percent off your first month and start making smarter bets today, people. Hey, this is John Sally, and you listen to SGPN. Let it ride. Basketball experience special edition championship week. Uh, futures episode, championship week preview episode, whatever you want to say. We thought we'd give you some extra content, um, just because we're so great at life. And uh, really, I just feel kind of uh, kind of like this when I when I think about myself, I say the best looking man. The best dressed man, long limousines, jet airplanes, custom made clothes, and any woman in the world I want. Just like that. Just like that. Folks, if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, my name is Colby Swig and Dan Tabay's dad, aka Pick Dundee. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet speaks with his fists and lives by his wits when dundee happened he was a superstar and you're nothing but a chameleon lemon-headed coward terrorist pussy and i'm after you buddy you're gonna pay for it good night i'm after you people out there in the universe coming at dundee I'm having a magical night that just got even better in Portland State. Covered the seven and a half and kept my Montana future alive. (laughs) The fuck out of here. Go listen to our picks episode. Brag about it, but currently seven and two. And I did. I just chased the dragon with Gonzaga minus three live in game bet. Besides my original Gonzaga bet. I'm feeling good about life. Uh, I am joined by my co-host. Give it up for sorry, Clark. I see he lost $700, but uh, my co-host, he's never lost $700. Give it up for former, former video coordinator for hall of fame, coach Bob Huggins and Frank Martin, host of the big 12 college experience, host of the ride and rush show. Give it up for Ryan McIntyre, AKA money line Mac. How you doing brother? I'm doing good. Yeah. I Clark, me and you were both on Montana. That was brutal. Missing those last three free throws and then a half court shot. Brutal. Take a sip. Mac tonight. Come on, make it back tonight. I knew my Vikings would cover. I knew. All right. Somehow, some way. And I love my future now. Now, the, the only thing that would fuck this is Montana State, I think. Yes. So, wait, Montana then gets Idaho State, right? Correct? Yes. Yep. And then Sac State. That is a little gets... tricky. That is a little tricky. The Idaho State. Oh, Bengals. boys from Pocatello. Mero Hodge is alma mater. They're playing good um, ball. They are. They are. Um, yeah, but this episode is essentially about, uh, you know, it's not, we already did our picks episode. Me, man, this is two a days. All right. Um, 
me, Mac, uh, NC Nick, Terrell Furman Jr., and Noah Beanick got in, picked every game, and uh, th- that's all out there. You can go, you can go hunt that thing down. All right, this is strictly about conference championship week. So let me introduce the host of the college baseball experience. Noah Beanick. How you doing, brother? What's going on guys? Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess the chat can thank me as well. I've basically, you know, held these guys captive and I said, we're doing this show tonight, <laughs> 17 conferences. We're going to get it all done in less than 90 minutes. That's the goal. Um, but yeah, this is my favorite time of the year. Literally, like the last week to watch 75% of the teams play college basketball for an entire seven months. So take it in. Um, and hopefully, we see over one and a half uh, game ending buzzer beaters for that cut. Bet. Yeah, get on yeah. over to cut. One that we cut is fantastic. You can make your own bets. And uh, SGP. Put out something starting today, all the way to Sunday. The over under one and a half bets take their bet. I mean, I personally would take the over. We saw two game winners at the buzzer. The clock has to. It can't be a game winner to go to overtime. It's got to be to win the game, and the clock's got to be on zero. But we saw two of those happen on Sunday. Why can't two happen over the next seven days or six and a half, whatever you want to say? To be totally honest, Mac and I behind the scenes were making this bet up and we did the math. We crunched the numbers last year's NCAA tournament. There's 69 games. There was not one single game ending buzzer beater. However, during the last week, there are four. Uh, so I, I pitched the two and a half number Mac pitched two and a half SGP over rid us and went with one and a half. I just think there's value on the over one and a half. Yep. I think there is too. I think there's a lot of it. Um, Get on over there. Cut.com. K U T T dot com. Promo code. What SGPN? Let's go. Um, Let's start off first conference. Noah, what do you got served up for us? All righty. So we've got some say it's the best conference in all of the land. Oh, it is the big 12. Uh, This tournament is starting on Tuesday. All of the games are on a neutral site in Kansas city. I mean, it's just crazy to see two of those newcomers with bye weeks, though. You know? Oh, I you want to <laughs> talk about? Two I, I like to mess with them. There's only one. I like to new- mess oh, with you them. got oh BYU single yeah. one. I get, I get yeah. BYU. Yeah. Well, what do you say? Like Houston, BYU. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Two. Well, point. the other half are in the playing games. <laughs> BYU say, former yeah. former Mountain West school. I'm just saying. Oh yeah. Mountain West and AAC have been doing it for a while. All right. Um, Yeah. So the odds, let me rattle off the odds. If you're watching youtube.com slash the college experience, hop on over here, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Big 12 starts off Houston minus 140, Iowa State plus 300, Baylor plus 650, BYU plus 1200, Kansas plus 1500, Texas Tech plus 2200, Texas plus 3000. TCU plus 5,000, Oklahoma plus 10,000, Cincinnati plus 20,000, K State plus 30,000, uh, UCF plus 50,000, and uh, Dub V plus 100,000, uh, as well as Oklahoma State. Um, <laughs> hilarious comment by David. Um, so you look at the bracket right now. We have this things up. You can watch the show youtube.com slash the college experience. I prefer watching the, like to me, I was doing the SGP show. I love the SGP show, but uh, one thing I, I would like them to show the bracket because you always, you can kind of forecast, you know, almost like you're dialing up a, a play in football we, or something here. We've got to cater to the YouTube audience too. There's a visual aspect of the show as well. True. True. Uh uh, no, normally that's just my good looks, but uh, in this case, we actually have a nice little bracket and by shout projection, out to sports. projection sports. Yeah. Yep. Um, I like the South side of the bracket. I, but you gotta be nervous here. If you're Houston, because TCU did beat Houston and Oklahoma yeah. only lost by one to Houston. I just think the South side of the bracket, there's a ton of value on Kansas because 
Kansas will beat West Virginia or Cincinnati. Kansas maybe, Baylor. Maybe. You're Kansas, so, breaking news? Yeah, real what, quick. What? Uh Dickinson and, and McCullough are out, are out both. for this tournament. Ooh, I didn't know about McCullough. Okay. Yeah, yeah both. Yeah, now all of a sudden all right. they're now all of a sudden. However, I, I will say positive news about Dickinson possibly being there for the NCAA tournament, though. Hang on. What? Uh I think Tide turning, I see as I remember, I was raising the desert, Started but it tides kind of tur- it's easy to see a tide turn. All of a sudden, West Virginia Did I say those words? <laughs> well, well they do honest. give Kansas fits, correct? So they do, not in Kansas City, though. <laughs> they gotta beat Cincinnati. They just lost by 50 to them. <laughs> well, I really like that angle. I did the SGP show. I said, take I mean, I already I already have a future on Kansas, but uh I think your three teams are all right there that I want action on. Texas makes a lot of sense to me. Boom. Yeah. Kansas state is worth a shot at those crazy odds because K state just beat Iowa state the other day. They will have a little bit of a home edge, I think. So I think your shot that circle that area. I wish I had the John Madden marker where I could just circle K state, Texas and Kansas. (laughs) I think that's, I think that's where you want to attack. I don't think you want to attack elsewhere. At all, really, unless it's, I mean, maybe you could sell me on TCU. I think I, I don't even think I bet this yet, but I think I took a, a little bit of action on TCU on the SGP show. So I need to actually I need to bet that, but I really don't think there's much value. I mean, I guess Baylor's path just got way better. Cause I had, yeah. you know, so maybe, maybe Baylor's all of a sudden in the mix, this fucks up my whole plan now because I thought Dickinson might be out for a game or two. This fucks up the whole plan, but Texas and K state. Definitely. I don't, I already have a ticket on Kansas. So I don't know that I would tell my clients out there. 1-800 pick Dundee to, uh, to go in on Kansas right now. <laughs> I would say just go K take K state, Texas and Baylor. Maybe you sprinkle TCU, but I don't, I don't think TCU is good enough to run the table. Because if they, I could see them knocking off Houston, but I could see Texas Tech beating TCU. I could also see Baylor, Iowa State, Texas beating TCU. It's a harder gauntlet. I think it. I think you want the south side of the bracket. South side of the bracket's the easy side. South side. Mac, what are you what are you doing here? Well, it definitely is. Uh, I like Iowa State. I think Iowa State will win the tournament. Um, so I'm definitely going to get them three to one. They're they're going to be the home team. They are going to have the crowd. If they play Houston in the final, theoretically, it's going to be a home game. It'll feel like you're playing in name. So I will take Iowa State to win it at three to one. Now that things just changed, I'm going to take Baylor plus 650. I, originally, I was thinking Texas. Yeah. But now I think you got to jump in on that. Yeah. I mean, I, originally, I was thinking Kansas, but now I'm just going to go to the two and three seeds. Iowa State and Baylor playing teams on their second and third or third games. And don't have to deal with half of uh, Kansas's roster. So give me Baylor plus six fifty and Iowa State three to one. Yeah, I'm gonna go three seven ten split. Three seven ten split. Uh, Baylor, Texas, Kansas State. Uh, Noah, what are you doing here? So yeah, I'm kind of splitting the bill between two of your guys' picks. I'm going with Baylor plus six fifty, Texas thirty to one. Uh, these are the Cocktail Napkins fourth and third ranked teams currently in the big 12 specifically, I'm actually targeting Iowa state Um, their side of the bracket here. They are three and six Iowa state is away from Hilton this season against top 50 Ken Palm teams without right losses to Virginia tech, Texas A&M and Kansas state. So if you, kind of just sort the so it, if you were to sort the data on Torvik since December 16th that's when Dylan DeSue returned for Texas they're the 16th best co- uh, team in the country or at least playing like it as for Baylor they're going to most likely play the shorthanded Kansas or they're going to get Cincinnati West Virginia I like that draw um they, then they would play Iowa State in the semifinal who I would favor them over on a neutral floor or I would have a Baylor Texas semifinal, which that's the goal uh, to get at least one team in the championship. So yeah, Baylor's plus six fifty for me, and Texas thirty to one. Now the only pushback, Noah, it's not going to be a neutral floor. 
Yeah, Kansas and Kansas State will have an edge. No, and Iowa State. Iowa State travels yeah. as good as anybody did this term. Iowa State may travel better than Kansas. They call it Hilton Cell. You're gonna see this um, crowd. It's 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 like Yukon in the garden. It's it's nuts how crazy they are there. Yeah, yeah. I'm sticking um, with them. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, someone, I was trying to find this. What's that? I might have scrolled too far up. Oh, Mike was saying, no one else thinks BYU on a future. I don't because I think they're not used to the Big Twelve tournament. Too up and down. Yeah. And I think they could, uh, you know, they just played Oklahoma State and beat them in Provo. But UCF and Oklahoma State, I think, didn't UCF get them in Orlando? I think they did. Um, yes. I just uh, think that's a. Yeah. Yeah. I think they did. And then after that, they're going to have to play Texas Tech and then more, most likely Houston. And then after that, you would get Baylor, Iowa State, or Texas or Kansas. No, I don't think there's any value in BYU. I think it'd be very unlikely for BYU to win this tournament. For what it's worth, I still think there's plenty of time to sell high on BYU. I I think they've really kind of overperformed expectations so far this year. Uh, They're the fourth favorite to win this thing, according to DraftKings uh, and their betting odds. Cocktail Napkin currently has them ninth, which it's it's a total logjam. There's not much separating a lot of these teams, but I don't think there's any value on the Cougs. All right, let's hop to the next conference. ACC. The Atlantic Coast Conference. These odds. These odds are fire. North Carolina plus 150. Duke plus 160. Clemson plus 850. Wake Forest plus 900. Pitt plus 1200. UVA plus 1900. Va Tech plus 3000. Uh, Syracuse plus 6500. And NC State plus 10,000. Florida State plus 10,000, Miami plus 15,000, uh, Notre Dame plus 30,000, and uh, BC 30,000 as well. And the 50,000 plays are Louisville and Georgia Tech. Uh, Louisville, right? Uh, no, this one, youtube.com slash the college experiences. I remind you again, ACC. This one begins Tuesday. All of there's, them neutral site in Washington, D.C. There's two that I love here Clemson is a good play. They're veteran. They're a veteran team. Now maybe DC would be a little bit of a UVA crowd, but uh, I think they can beat any of those teams they're facing. And then they would get Duke. If Duke doesn't get upset. I love the fact Duke. So young Clemson. So old. We saw Clemson win in chapel Hill. Uh, we saw them win at Bama. I think there's a ton of value on Clemson, Jack Coyle. There we go. And Mac's going to hate this, but I actually like Pitt as the other play from an odd standpoint. Pitt is going to play um, what Georgia tech, Notre Dame or wake forest. I like now Pitt could lose to any of those, but they could also, they should be favored against those three. Um, then Carolina. Yeah, I understand Pitt against Carolina should be a heavy dog, but Pitt has shown this weird capability to be really hot for one game. <laughs> so yes. it's worth the shot with the value you're getting for Pitt to, to, to upset Carolina. And then, like I said, I don't even know if you could pencil in Duke in the championship away from Cameron indoor. I think they could lose to Virginia. They could lose to Clemson. They could lose to Syracuse. If NC state got hot, I don't know, you know, so the Pitt one's just a hope that Duke gets upset, and for one game, you get up against North Carolina and beat a team you shouldn't. And the rest, who knows after that? So I love Pitt and Clemson as my two strongest plays. Mac, where are you going here? I had uh, Clemson and Wake, and I know they both have to win an extra game, but like you said, I, I feel like they're going to get a average or below average team in, in the playing game. And for Wake's standpoint, they're on the bubble. They need some momentum. Um, get that first one out of the way and then beat Pitt and then play with Talos money against Carolina. So I like my, Wake my, at nine to one and Clemson is plus eight fifty. My my only problem with Wake is they've been so horrible away from Winston Salem. That's why I took Pitt. Yeah. Like, at least Pitt's won some key road games. Um I was trying to sell myself on Wake early just because I of that. I was like better than Pitt. Like no they are I, as a roster, but not not yeah. on the road. On the road, I mean, yeah. And, uh, 
I mean, I know that wouldn't be a true road game, but Wake's just been so bad away from Winston Salem. It's hard to have faith, but they both blew each other out. Yeah. Uh, Noah, what are you doing here in the Atlantic Coast Conference? So I kind of attack this a little bit differently than both of you guys. Truthfully, I don't like this conference at all. I think it's North Carolina and Duke to me. I. I cannot lay the price that they're currently at, but I think they are head and shoulders the best two teams in this conference. I don't um, know about the Duke side of it. Like Carolina, I, I agree, but like Duke on the road, it's not like they've looked amazing. How is Duke, this year. How is Duke plus 160 and Carolina's plus 150? That's the one that perplexed me. I was like, those two I, teams are not the same. It just seems like both of them are going to get to the championship. And I really? say that. I if say they, that if, loosely because I mean there's still basketball to be played. However, if if Duke this played ACC Clemson, been so inconsistent this year. But if Duke played Clemson in a neutral, I think that's a 50-50 game. I don't even think that's a like we sit there and favor Duke. So th- th- this was my strategy at least. I'm trying to if you're playing futures here, I'm trying to find spots to where I can get value on a team right now and then hedge out of it in a, a future date when they possibly get to the championship or just run into North Carolina or Duke in a semifinal game. Wait, did you, did you say hedge? Yeah, I said hedge. I, I don't like any of these teams outside of the top two seeds in the ACC. I just question if they can win. This guy's looking forward to a hedge. I just can't. I question. I don't think any ACC team outside of UNC or Duke can win three games in a row. I really don't. I have to see really? it to believe it. I think so, Clemson certainly could. Clemson's they would have to win before. four. They would have to win four. Clemson's so, done this before. My first one is going to be Virginia. Here's why. It's real simple. 19 <laughs> to 1. It's a disrespectful price. On a team with a double vi- double buy, and they have the best coach in the conference. Simple as that. Win one game, get to Duke nineteen to one for two more games, or I can get Duke at a uh, at a spread in the mid single digits. Next one, if if, if you're gonna, I don't know, if you. Uh, Let's let's just say this. Georgia Tech has been a very polarizing team so far this season. <laughs> Wake Forest can't win on the road. Pitt needs the three ball to win. And they're very inconsistent. Notre Dame at 300 to 1 is a shot that I like because <laughs> Michael Shrewsbury's done a solid coaching job with this roster. That's He's burning money, dude. Freshman. That's Burning fucking money. He's starting four freshmen, has the freshman of the year in Marcus Burton, and his son, Braden Shrewsbury, kind of led this team. They've beaten Wake Forest and Clemson in the last four games here. They're playing their best ball at the right time of the year. Georgia Tech. Those were Wake in Forest South Bend. Well, well, I don't get <laughs> it's not. It's the easiest path in this ACC tournament to get to a semifinal. Lastly, it's Virginia Tech, 30-1. to 1. That's my last little sprinkle to try to get plus EV into a semifinal. Virginia Tech's done this before, Colby, with Mike Young, Sean Petula, Hunter Couture back in 2022. They did. They ran the whole damn thing. And they beat North Carolina during that run. Virginia Tech, I think they have some pieces to do it. The but again, it's... <laughs> It's it's very hard to predict an outside shot for me in the ACC. I mean, the Hokies one, okay, maybe they're a veteran team. The Notre Dame one is f- absolute worthless in my opinion. There's a reason why it's three hundred to one. I understand that, but they just they, they haven't won on the road much. Give me my Miami. <laughs> my, I would take my I would take really every other team. Yeah, but look <laughs> at Miami's path. You got Clemson and Virginia in front of them. Yeah. I mean, Virginia's Clemson, not that hard. Clemson would yeah. be really hard. If they got by that, I think they could actually get Virginia. But, uh, yeah, it would be more so buying into Laranaga. But Miami's got a better roster than Notre Dame. So, like, that oh, is 100%. why I can understand that. that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm not arguing that. I know. I'm just saying to me, like the Notre Dame one. I look. I, 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 for an upset or two, I'm with you. There, I think it's impossible. I, I think it is impossible for them to go win the ACC championship right now. It's, it's not a play directly to get to win the ACC championship. Like I said at the beginning, I'm looking the hedge out of it when well, they get to the semifinal against North Carolina. I don't know if you go ahead and uh, play your gunshots again. I'm we don't fuck. say that on this show. You know what I mean? We don't advise to fucking hedge. I mean, <laughs> I'm, not, fucking, I'm not advising God, to go bet it. money on Clemson. Sir. I've already bet the I've only already thing on my mind on Clemson futures. was pussy. I'm not doing it on Syracuse. I'm not doing it on you fucking Pitt. I'm not doing it on Lake. I'm not doing it on Florida punk. State. Georgia Tech, hell no. Miami, they haven't played in the final two months of the season. Punk. Louisville? I can't talk out. to this son of a bitch. I can't talk to that son of a bitch. I really can't. I can't. You destroyed, fool ass bitch made punk. <laughs> I can't believe he comes on here spraying this shit. <laughs> I can't, like, I, I really, I really just, I can't believe this is what we're talking about right now. Yeah, you would have told me this pre-episode. I said this episode doesn't have to be done. That's, that's, I mean, why, I, that's why we're doing it. <laughs> that's why I didn't the say. The fuck that. is that? <laughs> this is just. Who wins the league? I predict Carolina, I Clemson. I kind of think Clemson too. I I, Clemson. I think I think Clemson gets it done. They beat North Carolina in the final. I like that. I think this North Carolina group is just out to win shit this year after a dud year Could last be. year. Yeah. Could be Carolina over or you know a lot of go to college for seven years. Um all right. Next conference. I'm just I'm a, I'm a bit taken back. <laughs> the Atlantic Ten Conference. Oh yeah, the, look at this bad boy. In this conference, we don't hedge. <laughs> um, the Atlantic 10 Dayton plus 150 Richmond plus 475 the Ramblers plus 550 UMass plus 700 VCU plus a thousand St. Bonaventure plus 1300 Duquesne plus 1400 George Mason plus 1500 St. Joe's plus 2500 Davidson plus 5000 LaSalle plus 35,000 Woo! Fordham plus 35,000 uh, St. Lewis plus 40,000 and G dub plus 40,000 Rhode Island plus 50,000. Um, I'm all over and I'm not doing this to be pat to be, to be buddies with Mac. I love the fact that UMass beat Richmond. I like that value. If they play, I know VCU is capable of beating UMass, but I think UMass is in a very good spot. Um, I also think the south side of this bracket is a little vulnerable. I'm pro- I, I actually think the winner of the UMass VCU game. I guess you could maybe sell me on, maybe sell me on Mason or St. Joe's, but I want to stay away from the south side of the bracket, mainly because I think St. Louis is talented. If they get through Rhode Island. They could potentially upset Duquesne. Duquesne is also red hot. Dayton away from the UD arena, I think is vulnerable. Loyola, I do think is better than all of them, but LaSalle's played better. I don't know. I don't want any of the piece of the South side, no South side here. I'm all North here. I'm, you know what? I'm just going to take a future on UMass and VCU. That's the angle to me. St. Joe's and Mason are interesting though, because I think they can knock off Richmond. Agreed. Yeah, I I think St. Joe's is going to win that game, and I think St. Joe's will have a shot to uh, knock them off. But uh, give me a uh, UMass. Obviously, I, I like U- UMass path. I think I think they will have some fans travel because they're in uh, Barclays. But uh, give me the Bonnies. I know the Bonnies stumble down the stretch, but how many times have we seen this with Mark Schmidt and, and the Bonnies? They always rally in the A10 tournament. Give me UMass seven to one, Bonnie's um, at thirteen to one. I mean, the, I, I do think Jay is a point with Loyola at plus five fifty. I think they're the best team this year in this conference. The only thing is, like, I don't think you want to win. I mean, I guess you want to win because the auto bid, but I'm saying, like, 
They've what have they what have they done like the past fifteen games? I almost feel like they're fourteen and one or thirteen and two. Exactly. That's why I want to fade them. It's almost like it's, it's that 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 would be very tricky. But I'm just gonna take UMass and VCU. No, what are we doing here? All right. So actually, my favorite pick in this conference is George Mason at fifteen to one. The Patriots, they're a really streaky team. There's a high chance that their perimeter defense just gets exposed by St. Joe's in game one. However, I think if they get past the Hawks, Mason obliterated Richmond last week, and all of a sudden Mason could be rolling after two wins. They get to the semifinals, and they've got a shot. Um, The second one is on the same side of the bracket, just like Colby was mentioning at the beginning of this. UMass plus 700 is the other sprinkle that I want. Now all three of us are on the Minutemen here. Um, Frank the Tank. They already have a head-to-head victory over VCU, and they, I mean, good luck stopping the conference's and second Richmond. best. And Richmond, yeah. Good luck stopping the conference's second-best offense with a Frank Martin defense, you know? Yeah. They have the momentum. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like the uh, the plays in this conference. Uh, let's jump to the next conference. What do we got next, Beanick? The C USA, which starts tomorrow, get out on Jacksonville State for that game against the airport with double lock for me and Mac. Um, so the C USA, obviously, it's a brand new CSA, C USA. Then years past. Uh, Neutral Latex site to- in Huntsville, by the way. Huntsville, yeah, Alabama, Hunts- Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama. La Tech still the favorite despite being the two seed plus one fifteen Liberty plus four fifty Western Kentucky the tops go tops plus four seventy five Sam Houston plus five hundred what the fuck uh, Utah <laughs> plus plus twelve hundred Jacksonville State plus twenty five hundred New Mexico State plus sixty five hundred Middle Tennessee plus sixty five hundred FIU the airport plus fifteen thousand my logic was very simple here. How are we not taking action on Sam Houston? Because I do think they are better than <laughs> now Jackson state or Jacksonville state c- could give them a game, but I think if they got yeah. through that, I so it, here's the like logic, not you tepper to, Liberty. Sorry. You lagged. What'd you say? No, no, no. I said, I like their chances against you tepper Liberty, but I can tell you this. The other one would be the tops for me. The tops are in a nice spot to me. The the fact that La, they split against La Tech, but La Tech beat them in the last game, which was not that long ago. I kind of like the angle of the tops being able to make adjustments in that loss. So I'm taking Sam Houston and the tops. I know it's kind of chalky to go with the one and three seeds, but they're not one and three seeds from an odd standpoint. So that's my logic there, Mac. What are you doing here? Um, I'll go. I'll go with the coaches I like in this league and. Jack State, we talked about it. Ray Harper's won this league before, and I know he's going to have a playing game. I think they're going to beat FIU. I think they're going to beat Sam Houston, and I think they're going to have a shot to win the league. So Jack State in the eight hole. Um, would you guys say the odds were? Because I have a Virginia team, so it disappeared for me on the odds. Hold on. For, for who? Jacksonville State. State. I'm pulling it up now. Plus 25 to 1. Yeah, so get, give me Jack State yeah. twenty five to one um, to get get the playing game out of the way. Pick off Sam Houston. Ray Harper's been there, done that, and then uh, I'll sprinkle on Western Kentucky with you, Colby. I think I think we get a Jack State Western Kentucky final here. Let's go. I like it. I like it. Noah, what are you doing here, buddy? All right. So at the beginning of this, you asked why wouldn't we take Sam Houston? Well. This is the reason. It's, I guess, a tough path because no. all three, hold on, all three teams that Sam Houston lost to in conference play are on their side of the bracket. They've lost to Jacksonville State. They've lost to Florida, Illinois, or Florida, Illinois. God damn it. Florida International. Those two teams would play them in the first game. They, they had three conference losses. The other okay. one was to Liberty. Well, Liberty though, uh, see like the Jacksonville state one, I'll back, I'll say that's going to be a a hard game. And, and you know, that one will be hard, especially with it being in Alabama, Jack state crowd probably, but I don't want, I'm glad they're not on the side as La tech, Western Kentucky. And I'll even say New Mexico state, New Mexico state. I think if they played Sam Houston could give them a game. 
I know they got blown out the last time they played, but just the fact that the, the coaching angles, both coaches know each other. Um, so I'll finish here by saying I'm so low shotting the conference USA with just Sam Houston plus 500. They're scorching hot right now. They have seven straight victories and I just don't understand the price tag. They're the number one seed for the reason for a reason. Um, and I think they're on the favorable side of the bracket. Yeah. That, that side of the bracket. I mean, Liberty's not that good this year. Um, all right. Let's I was just jump. kind of establishing, I guess, why that price is very weird. Yeah, doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but watch Jacksonville State beat them. Uh, hey, real we're, quick, we're, and Gary, S, Gary made a point. He said, this is Jacksonville State's first year in the league. Yes, but Ray Harper's done this twice already at uh, Jacksonville State, first year in the OVC, won it, and at uh, at Western Kentucky back in the day as an interim coach. He's won conference tournaments before, so a guy that's had, had a history of winning in March um, in conference tournaments. All right, folks, I want to tell you the college basketball experience is brought to you by it's not only March Madness, it is Merch Madness. 15% off everything in the merch store with the promo code Madness. Uh, look, they got picked on D t shirts. Storm the court t shirts. Look, college basketball is court storming. All right. Don't let these fucking stupid suits tell you otherwise. Get on over there, rep your court storming t shirt, and let the fucking people know that you came, yeah, you, you came to the stadium with a purpose. Storm the fucking court. All right. Uh, get on over there. Promo code uh, madness, 50% off everything. We're also brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 different states. P2P social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends and other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. Plus, there's a ton of fun social features that give it a feel of a betting social network, so to speak. Uh, Cut offers lower VIG and fully customizable odds as well. You can create your own bets. So what are you doing, folks? Download Cut today in the App Store. Or visit Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Uh, pick whether your favorite player will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. You can win up to 100 times the amount of money you enter in a single night. Pick between two and five players to build a pick em entry. Sign up today using the promo code SGPN to get a first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pickup special over at Underdog Fantasy. Noah, what'd you want with uh, earlier tonight for this play? So earlier tonight, I went with UCF CJ Walker. This game is being played early on uh, Tuesday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern. That is 9.30 a.m. Pacific. I went with his higher than a half turnover. <clears throat> He's had at least one in 13 straight games. So of course it's, he's really never had more than two in any of those 13 straight games, but it's a very nice trend and hit rate. So I'm not going to pass that up. CJ Walker higher than a half turnover. There we go, folks. Hop on over there. Underdog fancy promo code SGPN. All right. We are back on the college basketball experience and breaking down more conference tournaments, youtube.com slash the college experience. You can watch this show. We got fucking cameras and everything. Uh, next up, we got the Mac. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this one. Take a Where's shot of whiskey music again. <laughs> T- yeah. Take a shot of whiskey. Finally, before you. Baby. Yeah. Where are we at here? Mac tonight. This one um, also starts on Tuesday. All neutral site games, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Um, I'm just searching for the odds on this. I, I don't see it. We're actually. not taking. <laughs> this is not. This is not. I don't have I this. Can, so you got to find odds for this. Yeah. So okay. Fairfield. I'll uh, take the comment off real quick. Fairfield plus three hundred is your betting favorite. Quinnipiac, the one seed, is plus three eighty. St. Peter's is plus 500. Marist is plus 550. Ryder plus 700. Iona plus 800. Mount St. Mary's 13 to 1. Niagara 17 to 1. Canisius 40 to 1. Manhattan 450 to 1. And Siena. Jackpot. Ding, ding, ding. 500 to 1. (laughs) So I'm all over. I've already bet Sienna? this conference. No, Fairfield, <laughs> the best team in Connecticut. 
And then the St. Peter's Peacocks. That's my long shot because it, it was either them or Ryder. To me, both were hot towards the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I I I think you can get more value on St. Peter's, and if they win that game, I think they're capable of be- beating the Aqua Duck. Uh, Fairfield, Marist is. I've been a, I've been betting the hell out of Marist this year, and I've had a pretty good track record doing it. But they're ass away from home. That's why I think Fairfield's going to fuck up Marist in the second round. Um, uh, Stags, Stags and Cox, let's go. Um, Mac, what are you doing here? Uh, I had I had St. Peter circled as well. The way that they finish the year, uh, Red Hot Fire. I know they dropped the final game to the Quinnipiac, uh, so a potential revenge angle. They got to get to Ryder, but uh, yeah, I mean those two teams. You flip a coin. The other one, long shot. Tobin Anderson, Iona. Oh, get the fuck out! They, <laughs> Iona always has a way. Tim Clouse, um, Rick Pitino. Oh! Iona always finds a way to fuck around in this tournament, and Tobin they Anderson do. has March Madness uh, magic before. So give me Iona and Tobin Anderson as my long shot. He did Man, that he just didn't he even bet win that his own just conference off, tournament no. last year. Oh, this is well, he's saving it for this one. He's saving saving it for the MAAC. Noah, what are you doing here? Talk for a second. Uh, give me one minute, but go. You're good. Uh, I, I'm riding with Ryder. Plus 700. They're the most experienced team in the MAC. Last year, they were the two seed and they got bounced by St. Peter's in round one. Mm -hmm. This year, uh, I think Mervyn James is the best player in the conference and he gives the Bronx a chance to win on every single night. So I'm going with the revenge angle with Ryder uh, as they brought back a ton of experience. Mount St. Mary's is the long shot for me here, 13 to 1. They split the season series with Canisius and Quinnipiac. So not only is it kind of just a 50, 50 with Canisius, but they've also, they have a shot against uh, Quinnipiac. If they get by the golden Griffins, Uh, the cocktail napkin has the Mount as the third best team currently in the Mac. So I'm going to jump on that value. Um, Yeah. So Colby, I I don't know. Did, did you hear the rider reasoning while max has gone? I heard the Quinnipiac side. So I'm going with Ryder. Last year, they were the two seed in this conference. They got bounced in the first round by St. Peter's. So I like the revenge angle because they are the most experienced. I like that. In the Mac. I like that. That is, right. that is interesting there. All right, let's jump to the next conference. Fun begins again. Oh man. Big East conference tournament. Absolutely fucking insane each and every year. MSG um, starts Wednesday. Yukon at minus one thirty five is the odds on favorite. Michael Crichton plus four twenty five. Marquette plus five hundred. Saint John's the White Knight Slick Rick plus eight hundred. Uh, Villanova plus sixteen hundred. Uh, Providence plus six thousand. Uh, Xavier plus eleven thousand. Butler plus eleven thousand. Georgetown. Oh, let's go plus a hundred thousand. Them and DePaul. Um, <laughs> So first off, Ed Cooley's gonna get revenge <laughs> the, in the third and final matchup. He is a yeah. They're matchup. zero two against. This them. is the one. I mean, this even a blind is the one. Finds a nut every once in a while. This right? is the one. So my one here. I don't know if you heard me on the SGP show today. I love Villanova's path, especially with no Tyler Kolick. I think Villanova has a great path. But to me, I want, I, I actually sprinkled, I'm sprinkling three teams in this because I think I'm going to hit on one of them. I'm going Seton Hall, St. John's, and Villanova. The winner of the, the Seton Hall, St. John's game, I think, well, Seton Hall has beaten UConn this year, and I think they've won two of three. Yeah. St. John's, I just can't fade that suit, that, that white suit at home there at the garden. <laughs> and uh, I think the most logical is, is Villanova. I just love their path. Uh, Creighton struggled at MSG. We've seen them struggle at MSG and Nova has a very, very nice path considering the injury to, to, to Tyler Kolick. Um, yeah, I don't normally play three teams, but I think three teams make sense here. Uh, Mac, what are you doing here? 
For me, man, I, I think St. John's is going to be too popular. I thought about them. I think they're going to be Seton Hall, but I feel like UConn's going to get it done against them. Just UConn does not want to lose in the Garden to uh, Patino. So um, I'm going to look at the South side, and I like Creighton. I like the way Creighton finished, plus 425. But I also love, like you said, Villanova, uh, 16 to 1. So give me Creighton plus 425. They went to the title game last year. Got blown the fuck out, and uh, yeah, give me a uh, Villanova sixteen to one. The Villanova plays great. You got to get yeah. on that. Yep. Uh, Beanick, what are you doing here? Uh, so I I decided to go to. Um, I love Vanilla. I don't know. I love the idea of taking Villanova here. I like Creighton more. Uh, they're on the Marquette side of the bracket, which we've talked about. Uh. Without Tyler Kolick, I think this is the side you want to pick your favorite on. Um, and Creighton has been one of the hottest teams in the country during the f- final stretch of the season. So I like the Blue Jays. Um, and then we talked we talked about them already in this segment. Seton Hall 35 to 1 is kind of just uh I don't understand why they're 35 to 1. They're 2 and 0 against St. John's this year. They already have a win over UConn. Uh. I I'm going to take the 35 to one any day of the week. If you're giving me that kind of price. So, uh, Kadari Richmond's a killer and Shaheen Holloway has that March magic as well. Just like Mac is saying with Tobin, Shaheen's got it too. Give me, uh, the pirates and the blue Jays. I like it. I mean, the Creighton ones, the, the only one that just seems too easy for me. I see Georgetown knocking off Providence and Creighton. I can you know? see Georgetown. I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> I can but see you guys, you guys, you, but you guys do over overrate Creighton a little bit for the past uh, couple of years. Um, anyway, they were in the Elite Eight and the Big East title game yeah. last year. They, they were, were in the Elite good. Eight, and they were a yeah. missed foul or a misjudged foul away from a Final Four. True, but we could also <laughs> say that Memphis was, uh, you know, uh, they could bring it up the the the, the court. They uh, were going to knock off a Final Four team and might have won the national championship. Well, you can't say that because they would have needed to win three more games to get to. The you know who they would have got in the second round? They would have got your Fairleigh Dickinson team. Do you think they would have struggled against your Fairleigh Dickinson team? No. Tell me who okay. they got so that, in the Sweet oh, so that puts them in the, rolled them, baby. So that, that puts them in the are, Sweet Sixteen. Are you, are you putting them over Tennessee, the in-state Always. big brother? Always Rick Barnes in the it, tournament. I will fade that 100% of the time. That would have been a fun game. That would have been that a fun match. Yeah. Tennessee, Tennessee, Memphis at the yeah. garden. That, that would have been are, fun. Are you giving Memphis the edge against K state too? No, I didn't think so. Memphis had plenty of on their, that plate. would have been that a game FAU. though. That would have been a game. Athletically. They would have been, but you that, can't that would have shoot been. Memphis into the final four just because they lost to FAU in the first round. Well, I'm just saying, if we want to play this game where we you sit there and I'm, you know try to like jump this around game and is fucking... being skewed to your Creighton was two seconds away from a final four. I understand that, but my point is, my point is, San Diego State and Florida Atlantic were a second away from losing multiple games on the first week, and so we could sit there and do this for the teams that played in the fucking national championship. Yeah, Tobin Anderson should have been the title game last year. I thought. Yeah. I don't know. UConn kind of steamrolled their way. To the <laughs> they were down against Iona. Down at halftime <laughs> against Iona. The Gales. Don't forget about that, buddy. There was some right? kind of stat where their average margin of victory in the NCAA tournament was like <laughs> no. They, they bodied, after that halftime, whatever was said, I personally think Danny, Danny Harley showed the UConn players his vagina. And after that, <laughs> they went on a run because they never wanted to see it again. All right. And boom. I feel like I feel like Colby just unreasonably hates Danny Hurley. Like what? Colby, if, no. Honestly, if if Dan Hurley had no play like player existence or player past, I don't know what I'm trying to say. And he was born today and he's just starting to act like he is acting right now. Colby would fucking love Dan Hurley. I disagree. I disagree. Uh, first Just off, him my going hate, at my, fans, you wouldn't love that. Well, oh, I on. do enjoy that. I think that's good for the sport, but I just don't know that he like. I find he's Grayson Allen as a head coach. I think that's the best way to say it. <laughs> he does and I never like Grayson Allen. And this started at Rhode Island. 
when he was at Rhode Island, he fucking yeah. started bothering me. I was like, man, I fucking hate. I talk, I wanted to root well, for Rhode Island, but I was like, I hate him and his antics. The, even the clips when the two of them were at Wagner together it was outrageous. <laughs> and when he was at Wagner, I didn't. It didn't. It didn't strike me. I mean, maybe I didn't focus enough on on him. But when he was at I mean, Rhode there's, Island, there's clips of both of them standing up next to each other, just screaming. <laughs> when he was at Rhode Island, he became super fucking annoying, in my opinion. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah, I fucking love this. Uh, the biggest tournament always delivers. And and Chad G, I would never want East Carolina to hire Dan Hurley. Um, next. <laughs> All righty. Got the SEC next. This SEC. SEC. This t- this tournament should be pretty fucking fun. Uh, Tennessee's the odds on favorite, plus 130. Bruce Pearl smashed his way to uh, plus 60. Kentucky, John uh, Fried Calamari is sitting there, plus 400. Alabama, plus 450. Uh, the Gators fresh off of Vandy loss. Normally you like to catch a loss right before yep. tournament run plus 2000 The Gamecocks plus 6,000 uh, Mississippi state plus 6,500 A&M plus 10,000 uh, Ole Miss plus 25,000 LSU plus 30,000 uh, Arkansas plus 30,000 Georgia plus 50,000 and a hundred thousand is Vandy and Mizzou. Now all games in Nashville. Yeah, and I think that's why Wait, you have to. I didn't get a double buy. <laughs> that's crazy. Kentucky I actually, finished hot. I, I think yeah, they they in, they, they got like screwed on all the tiebreakers. I, I thought yeah. South Carolina was the three or four. Yeah, yeah, they did get screwed. Um, they got screwed because Arkansas should have beat Bama. It was a goaltending. Um, but uh, I think the value here is Kentucky. In Tennessee, obviously, if you've ever been to the state of Tennessee, every fucking person is a is a Vol fan, and they, none of them went to Tennessee. It's just the, the biggest ten, outside of Memphis. The city of Memphis, I don't think likes Tennessee, and I, I can dig that. Um, but I think you'd be a fool to not. I mean, I know they're the one seed, but um, then Kentucky, the one and two seed. Uh, I, I'm not saying anything racy here. This is uh pretty chalky there. I like both those angles, but Texas A&M is one that I'm interested in. I think Texas A&M is interesting. I think South Carolina is interesting mainly because South Carolina is one in Knoxville. And also I think they would get, I think they would, I think they could beat Auburn, not at the jungle. So if you want to get real crazy too, I could see Arkansas knocking off South Carolina. <laughs> If, if they get through Vandy, which is always, they lost to Vandy the last time they played him. But no, I, 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 my, my plays just give me Kentucky and A&M Kentucky and A&M. Those are my plays. Mac, what are you doing here? You know, Kentucky, I think feel like Kentucky's going to be really popular. Give me A&M. I think A&M older bunch started playing better. Finally down the stretch. And give me Florida. They potentially <laughs> would get, fu- they would potentially get fucking Alabama. Alabama's Freaking fraudulent! It just and murdered I, Bama. Yeah, too. and I and I, I think, think the problem is you would get Kentucky and then Tennessee though. If they if they beat A and M, I mean that's a buzz that's is true. really good in in in, uh, in postseason play. So I like A and M, although they did just beat Ole Miss by about a hundred. I was about so to I say, watch about out for that one. That, for that's, I'm not ready to yeah. write them in yet. <laughs> and, um, and, and if I take Beard in the points on whatever Wednesday, everybody or Thursday, don't kill me. Just because I <laughs> I'm picking A and M with my future, and Florida, um, yeah, A and M in Florida, and then uh, what's Missouri at? Just kidding, <laughs> dude. Arkansas is an interesting play there. Arkansas is playing better. They should have won at Green Bama. Took that on SGP, right? I think so. They should have won at Bama. I don't I'll care what anyone says. You watch that Give game. Me Arkansas. Yeah. Give me A&M, Florida, and Arkansas. I'll go long shots in this league. I don't think I don't think the Arkansas plays that crazy because I think that like getting Auburn away from the jungle is a winnable game. Um, now, I, I mean, they, watch them lose to Vanderbilt, but um, yeah, if Andy's at home, it's going to be chalk, man. This, this thing's never chalk. Yeah, last year uh, it was uh, actually. Bama, the one seed last year, won it, but they did win it over. I think it was Texas A and M was seven. like a, a. No, they were like a four seed, I think. Right? A and M, A and M's made a run in both years. Yeah, the one year they made a run as a seven seed and missed out by one game. Yep. So that's why 
So I, I did a similar approach to Mac with the SEC. I have three shots. All of them come with at least, uh, you know, they're starting off uh, in the Thursday round. My number one is give me Texas a and I mean, like Mac has mentioned, they've done it before. Two previous seasons, they've gotten to at least the semis. Last year, they lost in the final to Alabama. Number two, the most disrespectful price on this board. Give me South Carolina at 60 to 1. Number three, the one that I think I like the most is Florida at 20 to 1. The Cocktail Napkins, fourth best team currently in the SEC. And this is an outstanding draw, in my opinion, for them because they're combined 4 0 against both Missouri and Georgia so far this season. Plus, they just beat Alabama by 20 in Gainesville last week. Um, and earlier this year, they lost an overtime to the Tide on the road. So they played them very well both games so far this year. I think the Gators get to the semis, and then you can start to think about, you know, if it's not Texas A&M, Kentucky gives Florida a shot. But Florida won in Rupp, and Florida was winning <laughs> against Kentucky and then didn't score a point in the final five and a half minutes yeah. at home. So yeah, I love Florida here. Uh, um, just trying to understand this one here. How the fuck did Kentucky finish above South Carolina? Didn't South Carolina have the tiebreaker? I think well, only I played think once. Was, I, well, I, think was, I, think, I think it was a four-way tie between Kentucky. If it's a four-way, the head-to-heads go to the wayside. And it's your oh, record. They fuck, again. They fuck them. That's what I'm saying. I was I was shocked that South Carolina was the five. I was like, what? No, I think they did rankings. I think they did rankings. Right? Is that it? They went by the top 25 rankings? And South Carolina was furthest back? Is it net? Well, no, no, you know what it was? I think I think it was common opponent. It's it's common opponents between Kentucky, Alabama, Auburn, South Carolina. And they're and, one and three. Yeah. Kent- or or South no, South they're one and two. They're one and two. SEC yeah, it, determines tiebreakers based on the round robin records of the tied programs. So North or uh, South Carolina's round robin record is one and two. two the yeah. top four seeds all get an extra day of rest. So because I that blurb only included South Carolina. Um, That's tough, and, man. They had the because t- they had the tiebreaker against Kentucky. But they didn't yeah. have it against Auburn and Bama. But they played Auburn and Bama in Al- Alabama. But they didn't play them in Columbia. That's fucking brutal. Um, it, but oh, Kentucky, a, but Kentucky drilled both of those. That's why they. Yeah, and 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 they were in Alabama too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even more impressive. Uh, Josh is asking what my picks were. I, I went with Kentucky and A and M here. I just. Uh, I think there's value on, on I like Noah's and, and this, I, I don't disagree with those guys much here. I think you could easily sell me on Florida, South Carolina, or Ar- even the Arkansas long shot. I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah. And the thing about Florida too, is they can't win away from home. I'll add that. Yeah. And Florida, I like the fact Florida just lost to Vanderbilt. Yeah. It's and I like the fact they get Alabama Arkansas in the final. <laughs> Arkansas is dangerous, man. They, I'm telling you, if you watch They're that Alabama better. game on Saturday, they should have beat Alabama. That's bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit call with like a, like 45 seconds left that would have put Arkansas up five, yeah. um, or a bullshit no call. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, that, let's. I jump. think we kind of all agree on the Jason Jones point. We've kind of faded ba- Bama oh, last yeah. year and this year. Yeah. March, March, that shit don't work, man. Um. Uh, what do we got next? The big 10, uh, the odds for the big 10 with 37 teams in it is, um, played in Minneapolis. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Purdue plus 100, Illinois plus 300, Nebraska plus 700. Whoa. Nebraska thoughts on third favorite. What the fuck is happening? Uh, Michigan <laughs> state plus a thousand Wisconsin plus 1500 Northwestern plus 1600 Iowa plus 3,500 Ohio state plus 3,500 
Uh, circle that. Uh, Maryland plus six thousand. Indiana plus six thousand. Minnesota plus ten thousand. Penn State plus fifteen thousand. Michigan plus thirty-five thousand. Um, this is simple to me. This is another one where I should, I think you should consider loading up with three picks. I love the Indiana schedule. Right, I think Indiana is capable of beating. I mean, it's not even that crazy. Honestly, it's not even that crazy to sprinkle Penn State. Didn't they just beat Indiana and Nebraska? Yes. I yeah. did. So Penn I, State yeah. can, can, has just recently beat Indiana and Nebraska. That would put them right there taking and God forbid something happened to Illinois. And can you look, yeah. look at Penn State Iowa matchup. Yeah. Um I mean, I, I think Ohio State and Indiana are hot. I like value on both of them. I don't want anything on the north side of the bracket. I'm taking Ohio State, Indiana, and the third team I'll sprinkle is Illinois because I like what they have there. Like I, as much as I fucking hate Illinois with uh, Underwood in in late March or early February or I can't talk. By late the way, February, early March. Yeah, Penn State didn't beat Nebraska. I had to burst a bubble. They didn't. I thought they did. No, in no. State College. No. Did they play in State College? No, they lost to them in Lincoln. They never played in 19. State College. They never play. Okay. Well, I, I, point is, you get Nebraska not in Lincoln. Yes. Which I think is much more winnable. Um, but yes, I thought I for some reason I thought they beat Nebraska in State College. My apologies. Um, but I still love like I don't think it's that I don't think it's that crazy because Penn State's in a nice spot. But yeah, I'm going Indiana, Ohio State, and Illinois. Mac. I got Ohio State and Penn State. And then everybody's counting them out after yesterday. Sparty. Sparty. Sparty, baby. I think everybody's out on them. This is when Izzo. I think they're going to beat Minnesota. And then all you got to do is beat Purdue and you have the inside track. Now, that's a, that's a tall task. But I think I think second time around, they played him tough in West Lafayette two weeks ago. Maybe Sparty shocks the world here but in an yeah. early noon game in Minneapolis with the crowd. They got to beat Minnesota in Minnesota. I think that's a little tricky. Yeah, but I, I think they'll take care of that. I think Minnesota's been full's goal all year. I agree. Do so you have a long shot? What do you, besides, I mean, I guess that's kind of a long shot. <laughs> but oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Sparty, Sparty in Ohio State and uh, Penn State. I won 8, yeah. eight 10, 11. I don't think it's going to be Chuck. I think Purdue's going to lose. Purdue won it last year. I, nobody ever repeats in the Big Ten. So let's I mean, go. for what it's worth, I think they won it over Penn State, who was a seven seed. Yeah, last yep. year. Yep. <clears throat> what are you doing here, Beanick? Nebraska. They're plus nine hundred. I think they've got a cakewalk to the semifinals. Uh, in this little quadrant of the bracket, it's Michigan, Penn State, Indiana. Nebraska is a combined five and zero oh against those three teams with an average margin of victory of 17 points this regular season. Nebraska is the cocktail napkin, the second best team in power rankings in the big 10 uh, currently. So go big red, uh, the long shot. <laughs> I've said it a few times uh, lately, but I, I'm going to take Ohio state at 35 to one. Uh, I'm rooting for Jake Diebler. Uh Go ahead. Be the next Rodney Terry. The Buck Nuts, they have they have a super talented well, team. Well, well, I don't get I right. I've never argued that. Uh there's just something that has been off with them in the regular season the past two seasons, but they've currently been on a little bit of a run. Uh momentum's on their side. Cocktail napkin has them ranked fifth in the big ten. Obviously, honestly, it doesn't take much to jump the middle tier that is just absolute trash in this conference. Um, but this uh, Ohio state team, honestly, they have 2021 Oregon state vibes, uh, a set of solid to very good guards with a transfer forward leading the way for Ohio state. It's Bruce Thornton, Roddy Gale, and Jameson battle. Oregon state kind of had the same formula. I don't think the big 12 or the big 10 is any better than the pac 12 was that year. I really think that Ohio Fair. state's got a shot. Fair. I mean, I think so too. Uh, what are we doing next? J jump to the next one. I'm sick. I, I, Big Ten that, basketball. That hurt. Me. To, yeah. That hurt to say. I, that hurt. Yeah, I know. I was I like, I don't know why. Was, you, you, yeah, 
you come in talking hedging, then you jump over to Ohio. I'll take Ohio State. What the hell is happening here? I'm joking. Uh, what's next, man? <laughs> Maybe Iowa. <laughs> oh, this is a now. This is a. Conference. This is going to be fun. Yeah. The Mountain ooh, West ooh, Conference. Um, so the favorite. This so this did this surprise you at all that uh, San Diego State still the favorite plus two sixty <laughs> as the five seed uh, Utah State plus four twenty five Nevada plus five hundred UNLV plus five fifty New Mexico plus six hundred Boise plus six hundred Colorado State plus seven fifty Wyoming plus twenty five hundred uh, Fresno plus thirty five hundred and San Jose and Air Force plus fifty thousand um, no did I say thirty five hundred for Fresno my bad uh, thirty five thousand. Um, Games played in Las Vegas. Yeah, mine. This is pretty simple for me. San Diego State and New Mexico are my plays. Um, I think San Diego State getting UNLV twice within you know what is it ten day stretch. Dutcher's going to make adjustments. I think that's a horrible draw for UNLV. Um, and I think San Utah State away from Logan is vulnerable, and that's put San Diego State in the championship game. Yep. On the other side of this, uh, actually, fuck, man, I kind of like the Nevada draw. I don't know, just uh, Nevada would be the 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 one that I would th- I would think about too. But right now, give me San Diego State and and New Mexico because I think New Mexico can beat uh, Air Force hopefully, and uh, <laughs> and then I think they can beat Boise, but I guess. But Jamal, Bat- is he playing? Is Mashburn playing? <laughs> uh, I think he sat out the last game to be ready for this tournament. Shit, they played better without him almost. Yeah. I mean, they uh, played half the season without him almost, too. <laughs> yeah. I'll just say New Mexico and San Diego State. I'm close to saying Nevada in New Mexico because I feel like San Diego State might have a heart. You know what? Let me change it. I'm going Nevada and New Mexico just because wow. I feel like San Diego State – has to beat UNLV, Utah State, and either Nevada, Boise, or New Mexico State. That's brutal. If you look at Nevada, I think getting Colorado State. Can I talk you back into the Aztecs? Yeah. They're the five seed. They're the sizable betting favorite. This price is telling you what to do. Solo shout on the Aztecs plus 260 for me. They just play so many fucking close games, though. They win this thing courtesy of Brian Dutcher and their number one ranked defense in the conference. Colorado State beats San Diego State in the final. Isaiah Stevens, they get hot. We've seen it before in this tournament with them. I think Colorado State's a dark horse here. And they get and they get Alfred in the second round. Good spot. They can beat Boise. They can beat New Mexico. I think they can they're gonna get to the final and have a shot to win it. So give me Colorado State. And uh, San Diego State for my two futures. So I like what you said oh, man. about two weeks ago about Colorado State, right? Yeah. You said once they get out of this conference, it's going to be like free air or whatever you said. Correct? Them and New Mexico. I'm trying to find it. Um, there was a tweet that I sent you guys about. About the strength of schedule? Yeah, I'm trying to find it, but I might not be able to. I could summarize. Basically, Utah State had a great schedule. That That is why – I mean, they, they protected home court. That's why they won the league. But it did help that they got a great schedule. Uh, Nevada got a great schedule. Boise got a great schedule. The two teams that got fucked on the schedules because it's an unbalanced league now was Colorado State and New Mexico, and that's why they're in the playing games. Yeah, I mean, I, all right. Gosh. He, he did pretty well off the top of his head. <laughs> I, 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 I because I've been I've I've been saying it that I think Colorado State and New Mexico are just a victim of their league right now. I think those yeah. two teams are still really fucking good. Because I just found it. Colorado it's, State beat the fuck out of Creighton still. That's the same team. Yeah. Uh, so is, from, is that Colorado State being great or is that Creighton being shit? That's Colorado State uh, being great. I, I like. I like, to, I like to fuck with you guys. Yeah. Um, uh, so, courtesy of Jeff Grammer on Twitter, uh, the current Ken Palm Conference strength of schedule and the Mountain West unbalanced schedule 
hardest to weakest, this was March 6th. So it's not counting the final week of the regular season. Number one was Colorado State. Number two was New Mexico. Number nine was Utah State. Number 10, Boise State. Number 11, UNLV. And I think it was two weeks ago, like a couple of days before I even saw that tweet. Max said just once once Colorado State and um, New Mexico get out of the conference, it's going to be a breath of fresh air. They're going to thrive in the NCAA tournament when everybody's fading the Mountain West. Those two teams are going to get out of what was just a gauntlet and make a little bit of a run as a underseeded team in the NCAA tournament. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I think give me Nevada in no, New Mexico. You're not gonna do that. <laughs> you can't do Nevada. I, I that's my I'm I'm backing <laughs> off San Diego State because I think San Diego State I do think they're gonna beat UNLV and I think they're gonna beat Utah State probably. Yeah. But I just don't know that because they, they play every game's like a three point game. Can they win that many in a row? <laughs> I don't think so. I think Nevada, at least Nevada wins by like 15 points. Some of the, sometimes against some of these teams, um, they did it last Nevada, year though. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Shout, um, out to to Ryan Hasty. Shout out to Ryan hasty. He goes, sub boys just got double texts and kicked out of the men's league. Glad to see Noah is alive. and well. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic work. Uh, <laughs> folks, I want to tell you the college basketball experience is brought to you by good old manscaped we top of the morning to you this episode is brought to you by st patrick's day shamrock shavers manscapes uh lawnmower 5.0 this year don't just chase rainbows make your own pot of gold and groom your little leprechaun with the leaders and below the kilt care say goodbye to your clover forest with manscapes lawnmower 5.0 and let your confidence shine bright embrace the luck of the Irish and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust manscape head over to manscape.com. Use that promo code SGPN for 20% off plus free shipping. And I've ever since I manscape, I, t- I told you guys this before I can proudly say I've found my pot of gold at the end of the old rainbow. All right. Uh, meet your new lucky charm for St. Patrick's day. The lawn mower 5.0 ultra this trimmer comes with two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, one for the old classic trim and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires equipped with dual led spotlights. (laughs) You can use that for other shit too, Uh, but you can navigate your shamrock patch in peace. And if you're worried, you'll make a mess. Don't even think about it. This thing's fucking waterproof. You can jump on a slip and slide Shave your nuts while you're at it. All right. This thing will be fine. All right. Uh, what are you doing, folks? Get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code SGPN at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the promo code SGPN manscaped.com. This St. Patrick's Day. Make sure your little hairy leprechaun is luckier than ever with Manscaped. We're also brought to you by Champs. Champs is hosting a free March Madness bracket contest for a chance to win $1,000. Plus, if you host your own March Madness pool, on champs, you'll get an extra free entry into that thousand dollar bracket contest. Tiebreakers are determined by who enters first, so register right now. Get your ass over there. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. And I just hit on Gonzaga, so my fire night, and I double hit on Gonzaga. My fire night, how about nine and two? It's a good night. Nine and two, and I think the, the best news is a couple of my futures survived. Um, we're talking Pac-12 oh, final God. before the detonation. Actually, it's been detonated. We're just waiting. Um, this tournament, I guarantee you, is stealing a bid. Sorry, Indiana State. The Pac-12 said, fuck you on the way out the door. <laughs> it's going to happen. I feel very strongly about... Not, I actually think Arizona, Washington state and Colorado could all get, there's a high chance. They all lose. Um, uh, the odds, Arizona's minus minus one fifty five. Colorado second plus uh, 500 wazoo plus 500 as well. Actually. But wow. When I did it earlier today, it was uh wazoo's odds were worse. Uh, Oregon plus 1200. Uh, Utah plus 1600 USC plus 2,500 Washington plus 3000 UCLA plus 4,500 
Stanford plus 6,500 Cal plus 13,000 Arizona state plus 16,000 Oregon state plus 35,000. Um, call me crazy. I think Stanford has a genius fucking path. <laughs> they did just because I think Cal Colorado. Can, yeah. I think Colorado could, could trip up to Arizona state or Utah. Right. So that would put like, imagine if Stanford beats Cal knocks off Washington state. I don't think that's that far fetched and they're playing Utah. I mean, I have no idea who's winning that game. It's a nice path to the championship is all I'm saying. Um, I don't mind the UCLA side of things either. Cause I think they're going to beat Oregon state. Yeah. USC is the hottest team going in. I feel like, I guess maybe Colorado, Colorado is probably the hottest team, but USC is right there. Washington's already let their coach go. So, you know, that damn well, they're going to win the pac 12. And then, uh, I mean, this is, this is hard. This is the hardest one we've had to do. I'm sprinkling some of that action on Stanford. It's ridiculous odds. So I'm games sprink- in Las Vegas, who does that benefit the most? The Mormons. All these neutral games. Utah. Las Vegas, huge Mormon population. I like Utah, 16 to 1. They're an older group, underperformed at the end of the year, new season. Get through that Colorado, get through that Arizona State game, get through Colorado. Washington State's overachieved. I think they're going to get to the final. Watch out for Washington. Like you said, Hopkins out. That, they, I mean, that's so Pac-12 too. They I tell, they have enough talent. They do have enough talent. Yeah, and everybody and their mother is going to pick USC as their dark horse. So give me Washington thirty to one. I'll sprinkle Utah. I'll sprinkle Stanford. I feel like I should take a third team in this conference. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> maybe Cal. I shouldn't. I like Cal. Yeah. I like Cal. Mark Madsen. <laughs> Dude, you know what's crazy? It's every single team like has a legit shot. Didn't Oregon State beat UCLA this year? It's Oregon State. <laughs> that might have been before <laughs> UCLA turned it on, though. I'm just saying if they did, and then like like that, I watched one of the Oregon State Oregon games where it was like a four point game with a minute left. Yeah. So it's like, and then the Oregon beat Oregon State beat Arizona. Oregon could definitely win it too. <laughs> I, I actually nah, UCLA won. swept the Oregon State this year. I just uh, did they? Know. Okay. Yeah. Forget Maybe Cal. Let SD. me get them on twelve to one. Dan Altman <laughs> get to the final. He's Not done it before. Yeah. Well, you get the bye week. I actually think that. Yeah. Oregon, Washington, know. Utah for me. Utah, Stanford, UCLA for me. <laughs> All three. Have, that that's my that's my final three. Utah, Stanford, UCLA. And Mac, what'd you go? I went Oregon, Utah, Washington. Okay, so both <laughs> of you guys gave out Utah. I'm not giving uh, out Arizona. We're gonna, gonna give out that. seven different unique Pac-12 teams. Fade <laughs> Arizona. <laughs> I I'm personally on the two and three seeds. Uh, they're both plus five hundred. Give me both Colorado and Washington State. I think this is the random side of the bracket. Like Colby is kind of hammered home uh, with the point that any one of these six teams could really come out of here. Uh, I'll take the two teams with the bye uh, that have played somewhat the best, most consistently throughout the season. And even that's a little bit of a stretch with Colorado, but I think their talent is above most of the others on this side of the bracket as oh, well. Oh, they're the second most talented roster in this conference. One hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, maybe third. Like USC has a shitload of talent over there, um, yeah. but they're a really trendy pick. Um, they beat Arizona yeah. last game. Give me, give me the two teams with the bye. Hopefully, they meet in the semifinal, and then we've got a guarantee in the championship to take on Zona. Uh, but I'm not even that confident that Arizona gets the championship. Just, I, I think the Pac-12 is about. The I think if you're an Arizona fan, you don't want that. You don't want this that is... win streak and then get going into the first round matchup again. Princeton 2.0. Um, I mean, you look at it two years in a row, and they've struggled in the first weekend both years when they got to the championship. What do, What do we got next? This This tournament's going to be fucking insane. <laughs> 
Oh, boy. <laughs> I got to admit, I love. I wonder bracket. who he's going to take here. We are talking the AAC. Oh, and it's going to be an 8-1 upset. <laughs> yep. And I mean, it's just, it's so fucking obvious. If you're looking, if you're in the matrix, you see it. Uh, Florida Atlantic is the odds on favorite plus 185, SMU plus 400, South Florida plus 500, Memphis plus 500, North Texas plus 850, Charlotte plus 1500, UAB plus 1600, Tulane plus 8000, ACU plus 8000, uh, Wichita State plus 9000, Tulsa plus 15000. Temple plus 50,000 rice plus 50,000 UTSA plus a hundred thousand dude. UTSA plus a hundred thousand is not that crazy. They just beat SMU. Uh, so if they beat temple, which they should, but this is a simple play. Mike Schwartz is the opposite of Rick Barnes. He waits for the conference tournament <laughs> to get in the right spot, you know? So and may the Schwartz be with you. <laughs> Dude, they're going to beat Tulsa. And then we're going to run with the bowl, so to speak. And then we get you a B, the Blazers. Dragons. Just fucking go play Dungeons and Dragons. Roll the 20 sided die. Get the fuck out of here, you fucking losers. Uh, we're going to dominate this thing. Um, south side of the bracket's pretty interesting because I actually think FAU has it. A little harder than I thought they would. I think North Texas could give FAU a game, um, providing they get there. But um, I actually think the North side's way fucking easier <laughs> than the South side because, like SMU, Charlotte, and then like I said, I don't expect UTSA to, but they've been they've been scoring points a lot lately, man. Their defense is ass, but uh, yeah. I think the north side is the easier side of the bracket. And uh, I will sprinkle East Carolina and I'll sprinkle Memphis. I don't want that. I don't want the south side of the bracket. Mac, what are you doing here? Um, yeah, I, I had Memphis circled, obviously. Um, they, they've, they've had to had to win it. I, I think FAU will ultimately win it. But if I want to take a, take a long shot, I don't know, man. It's what about SMU? They've it's shown flashes. It. They've yeah. shown flashes. They get Charlotte. I think SMU could go on a run here in the bottom half. Maybe we get a Memphis I SMU final. The South side is is harder to project than the North. The North, we know East Carolina is a force. We know Memphis yeah. is a force. Right? We know the South is I could see SMU, North Texas, Charlotte, FAU coming out of there. There's four teams. In the north side, too, we also know that the one seed's kind of, you know, a little bit fraudulent. That the easy, easiest strength is I would even say them. UAB away from home is fraudulent. Yeah. Like, both. that's what I'm saying. Both those teams. I love the Bulls. I was on the Bulls very early in the year along with NC Nick. But they had a little bit of a cakewalk in the regular season. Their win against Memphis, they came back from down 20. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, Noah? What are you taking? So I, I'm on Memphis, plus 500. Uh, I think this is a really, really nice draw for Memphis. Um, they just destroyed uh, UAB. They were losing in that game, but they won it by 15 plus. <clears throat> Penny and Cruz should get past that first game. And then South Florida would be the semifinal opponent if all goes chalk. Uh, like I said, they blew a 20 point lead against USF. Um, the other one that I'm going to sprinkle in this conference is North Texas, just because they have given FAU fits both this year and last year. Uh, a couple of times they weren't able to get across the finish line with W's, but North Texas plays the Owls tough. Um, and if they are able to get by Tulane and FAU, uh, they have another familiar opponent. By the way, I wanted to point this out. This is the American Conference. Uh, I, looking at the bracket, at least the top four seeds, I thought it was Conference USA. Number two, Florida Atlantic. Number three, Charlotte. Number four, UAB. Oh, and then there's North Texas at seven. <laughs> so, what about number one, though? 
I'm I'm just I'm making a joke. I know, buddy. Three I know. I'm just saying. Just so, saying. Mem- Memphis five to one. North Texas plus eight fifty. Those are the two shots sprinkles that I have in the American. I'm sure they'd all win the Big Twelve too. Well, that's what I'm saying is yeah. if for all these CUSA They're teams, the just Houston, <laughs> the, these CUSA teams jump in the AAC and they think they can win it. Well, no, they didn't. Florida, South Florida won it, and Memphis <laughs> and and Memphis is the regular season. South Florida won, and Memphis will win the conference tournament. So get your foo foo bullshit out of here. <laughs> so we're all on. Memphis. You got a first year head coach in South Florida winning it too. That's what I'm saying. He <laughs> walks right into the to a program. That's built, ready to win. All right. Um, anyway. uh, by the way, this this conference, it's in Fort Worth, Texas. That was another reason why I kind of like North Texas. Uh, that's where Andy crossed the border, right? Fort that Worth, Texas. Is flying right above my uh, You remember the name of the town, don't you? Yeah. San Juan Taneo. Uh okay. Uh, I think it also benefits SMU. And granted, I mean there's a lot of money behind that program. They'd love to send SMU off into the ACC with the conference tournament. I I I'm all Memphis <laughs> and SMU, man. The talent, the talent underachieving. Mm. All right, next. East Carolina's going to win it all. I, I just hope that Florida Atlantic goes dancing. I want to see them again. Ah, fuck them. Fucking owls. Who? Who? Oh, Get the bracket. fuck out of here. This bracket, this bracket. Absolute dog shit. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> absolute dog shit. Big West, you filthy fucking jackasses. Um, so, love the Big West, but not, not the bracket so much. Um, where the hell are my odds for the big this West? This is going to be fun. Uh, UCI minus 200. UC Davis plus 450. Hawaii plus 850. Long Beach State plus 1100. Santa Barbara plus 2000. Riverside plus 4500. Woo! Uh, Bakersfield plus 5000. And CSUN plus 6000. Um, yeah, so I'm on Irvine. And I'm on Riverside because that is going to be the game we see on Friday, March 15th. And one of them will be playing in the big West championship. Is the San South Diego side is not eligible? No, because UCC they're near three. Is not eligible. They it's didn't, so they didn't qualify either for the bracket. UC San Diego, Fullerton and Cal Poly did not qualify. Or maybe San Diego Wait, was no left. San Diego. San Diego was was like, what are you it, talking about? They almost, they almost won, won the, the league. Season. Yeah. No, they were left out of the conference tournament. That's what happened. Because Why? they can't go. They're ineligible for the NCAA tournament. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't know they were one of those teams. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is so this stupid. They they won the I'm baseball conference it. last year, too. <laughs> <laughs> Irvine is going to uh, – this is going to go chalk. I mean, Riverside could give Irvine a game. I think it was like a – actually, I think they might have got him once in Riverside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Want to be West Coast Conference here? <laughs> yeah, it's fucking horrible. It's fucking horrible. Um, yeah, just give me Irvine and Riverside. Mac, what are you doing? Let's get to the next conference. I'm done. Give me Hawaii. Shit. Give me Hawaii. Hawaii. Hawaii's been up and down. Um, but I think they why have do they talent. play this in Hawaii? The whole tournament should be in they Hawaii. They should. They should. Hawaii yeah. has to deal with all of this shit, and it's an exotic place, which is most fucking tournaments like to go to nice places. What are we doing here? Hawaii. Is, uh, a, For is what Mun- it's worth. Is I Munson mean, coaching? As far as I know. Because because they, they parted ways today. Yeah. I don't, as far as I know. <laughs> if if Munson... I, I'm going to take a stab on Long Beach. With the coaching angle. Give me uh, give me Long Beach. Give me Hawaii. Because they're, they're going to move on from Munson. Maybe this is the last stand. Or it's the interim route. So give me what do Long they Beach call? What do they call uh, Hawaii and Vegas? It's like the ninth island or the eighth island, something like that. This is in Vegas, right? I'm pretty sure it's in Vegas. Yes, yeah, um, it's in Henderson. Yeah. So yeah, basically. Vegas. Yeah. So so mu- Yeah, dude. Months if you're not gonna have it, it in out. Hawaii, have it in Vegas. No, it's too many in Vegas, man. Fuck that. So I agree with that yeah. too. So, yeah. so, yeah. so they're part it is ways. convenient though if you wanted to go to Vegas and cover college basketball. Them having five conference tournaments out there is kind of fun. Yeah. Colby, 
Yeah. It's my, they're parting ways at the end of the year. Munson, his best friend is Ross Turner, the Irvine coach. Oh, do he's, him a solid. He's do gonna fucking solid. beat Irvine. Do him a they're solid. Gonna win the tournament. Give me Long Beach <laughs> to win and go to the tournament. One last hurrah. Everybody forgets Munson's the one that got Gonzaga going. So give me uh, Long Beach to get it done here. Let's go. You know what's not a crazy play, even though we've faded him a lot down the stretch. Santa Barbara could win that South Side. Absolutely. Yeah. Fucking so I it's full skull too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I attack that bottom half um, because I look at this like, okay, the reason why I love this bracket. First off, I have to talk about it: the triple bu- or the double buy for UC Irvine, basically all the way to the semifinals. They finished three games better than UC Davis in the in the standings. Two games better than UC San Diego, so I think they so, deserved a large. So why, why is that fair for UC Davis then? So here's why I'm uh, saying this is because I don't <laughs> think UC Davis is worth that buy. No, and I want I want this bottom half of the bracket. Yeah, I want pieces all over the place. No so doubt. I grabbed, I sprinkled three. Uh, I went with UC Davis, Hawaii, and UCSB. Uh, the Gauchos are twenty to one. If they get past Northridge, which is a handful in itself, uh, they played a game. They beat the Northridge's ass in one game. That was like a third. Yes, they beat Northridge by like I think thirty. They went yeah. One and one. They did. They, they did. Yeah. Uh, so if UCSB gets by Northridge, they've already now played a game in uh, Vegas where Hawaii has not. The Gauchos, they're two and zero against Hawaii, and they've beaten them handily both times. Well, Santa Barbara the, has like three or four guys that were on the team yeah. last year. Yeah. Yeah. So they were supposed to be way better than the sixth seed in this fucking conference. Yeah. The second one rationale here behind Hawaii plus 850. I think they finished as the hottest team in the Big West outside of Irvine. Uh, the Bows, they're eight and three in their last 11 games with a 17 point win over UC Davis in that span. Granted, one of the three losses in those 11 games were to was the UC Davis, but wait, 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 the Bulls Hawaii, are hot. Hawaii needs to be in the mountain West. Either way, the Bulls are hot. I think they got a shot to win the big West. Uh, lastly, plus four fifty on UC Davis. They are the only team that has played UC Irvine closely both times this season. Uh, so I, I just don't think the UC Irvine anteaters are as good as like a Gonzaga or St. Mary's. Plus 450 when all UC Davis has to do is win one game to face the Anteaters. I'll take that. So three sprinkles all on the bottom side of the bracket, hoping to get one team in the final against Irvine. Next. <laughs> oh, my bad. Tell me. Um, the whack. The whack. The wax odds. Same shit. Grand Canyon minus 150, Tarleton plus 380, UTA plus 550, Seattle plus 700, the Lumberjacks of Stephen F. Austin plus 2,500, Valley, Utah Valley plus 3,500, Baptist plus 5,000, AC plus 6,000. Uh, this is another, dude, why is everyone doing this shit? These fucking West Coast idiots. Um, <laughs> Las Vegas, too. So, another one. The Mexicans didn't make it. I, I, I think it's worth taking UT Arlington. Give me Arlington and give me Valley. Arlington? No, because I think you almost want to play one of the one seeds just because they don't play. Yeah, give me Arlington and Grand Canyon. I'll go chalk. Fucking stupid. I don't even want to watch this shit. Uh, uh, yeah, no, give me Arlington. They finished red hot down the stretch. I, I know they they uh, dropped their final game and then uh, give me Valley Valley Valley's been hot for me all year. They finish hot down the stretch of so Valley and Arlington for me. Solo shot for me. I'm going Tarleton State. Uh, they just beat GCU within the last week, I think. So plus three eighty on uh, the Texans. I think that's valid. They're already playing in the semifinals. Win one, you play Grand Canyon in the final. I like that. All right, next. Get this filth off the screen. Uh, there we go. <laughs> get the this swag off the screen. <laughs> the swag. 
Uh, the swag is always fun. And it's always beyond, Texas Southern. Well, Texas Southern is plus 475 because Alcorn's the odds on favorite plus 280. Southern's plus 300. Grambling plus 350. Southern, as we alluded to, plus 475. Jackson State plus 800. Alabama State plus 1800. Bethune plus 3000. Alabama AM plus 4000. This so is you're telling me Birmingham, by the way. So you're telling me Bethune misses out <laughs> on playing Texas Southern or Jackson State, who I think are the best rosters. Shout out to Bethune, the. Uh, Four teams that didn't qualify to Arkansas Pine Bluff, Prairie View, Florida AM, and Mississippi Valley State. Bethune is worth the sprinkle. They're really worth the sprinkle. In the South, give me Texas Southern. Bethune and Texas Southern are the plays. Mac? Texas Southern is going to win it, and Alabama State is going to pick off Grambling. In the eight one because this is the swag. I hope baby. so. That was set up perfect yeah. for Bethune. Yes. Alabama uh, State, sprinkle some on that baby. Let's go. Alabama State and Texas Southern in swaction. <laughs> no, what are you doing here? I'm on the two three seeds here. Alcorn State, Texas Southern. Just get me one into the final here. Uh, Texas Southern, like I mentioned, they always win. Alcorn State, I feel like. I, I feel like they're the best team in this conference. After watching a couple of the the Monday slates where it's been Big 12 starting both of their games at 9 o'clock and we got SWAC going at oh. 7, 8, 30, and 9, I think I've settled on the Braves being my favorite team in the SWAC this year. Mm. Next. <laughs> the MEAC. The MEAC. Oh, boy. The oh, MEAC. Oh I, I'm, I'm excited for this. Norfolk State's plus 180. Central. North Carolina Central's plus 220. Howard's plus 400. South Carolina State's plus 550. Delaware State's plus 1,000. Morgan State's plus 2,200. Morgan State's been red hot lately. The Maryland Eastern Shore plus 9,000. Coppin State plus 15,000 with Larry Stewart there. Um, I, I mean, how do you not look at Central's path and say this is they're playing in the championship yeah. game? South Carolina State's been a fun story, but I just think Central. You have to play central here with those odds. I'm going to play central. Oh man. I wanted to say Howard, but Morgan state's so hot right now. I think we go chalk here. I think I'm going Norfolk and central. I don't want to play both. Give me central and give me Howard. I had Howard. Yep. I got Howard yep. and I got South Carolina state, South Carolina state. Your two head coach, Eric Martin's got him playing baby. Uh, I am worried about the Delaware state game. Get through that. I think they could beat central again. So give me South Carolina state and Howard in the final here. Phoenix. What are you doing here? I like chalk here. Uh, I like Norfolk state. They've been pretty clean in conference play, and they did not lose a single game to any of the teams on their quadrant of this bracket. I think Norfolk dances to the championship. I'm going to solo shot it. Give me Norfolk uh, and them at odds. I know it's the tougher side of the bracket, but they haven't lost the Howard, Morgan State, or Compton State all year. Uh, in the MEAC, where everything is just kind of, you know, um, what's the word I'm C looking for? Central owns this conference, guys. They do. Central's coming out of this. Yep. Um, Give me Sparty. I want to tell you the college basketball experience is brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame Bets, a sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NBA and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets to craft more intelligent, data driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit HOFBets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start research and start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. All right. This fucking tournament, the Mac. Return of the Mac. I am so excited to watch this fucking tournament. Why is the Mac perfect? I just feel like the Mac has the heartbeat of college athletics accurately. Akron plus 155, Ohio plus 330, Toledo plus 340, Kent State plus 600, Bowling Green plus 1400, Miami, Ohio plus 1600, Central Michigan plus 2200, Western Michigan plus 6500. The MAC is the most beautiful thing. And you consider football and basketball, this thing is going to be fun. And I can tell you this I have zero confidence in Akron right now. 
<laughs> absolutely <laughs> zero confidence in Akron. So I will take the Ohio Bobcats because I think they're going to beat Western Michigan. And I kind of think they're going to be. Where's this being? Is this Detroit? Cleveland. Cleveland? Okay. Cleveland starts Thursday. Well, Akron is very close to Cleveland, though. Um, I'm going to sprinkle Ohio. Oh, man. The North is insane. <laughs> so I actually dissected the North like thoroughly. Uh, Toledo on DraftKings, they're the third favorite to win this thing. Akron and Ohio first and second. Uh, <laughs> Bowling Toledo Green's, just won Bowling ass. Green's 14 to 1, which is fifth. Central, the four seed, is 22 to 1, which is seventh. And uh, Kent State is six to one, which is fourth. I I think Toledo's on the easier side. I don't understand Toledo's odds plus three forty. They're the one seed. They've been the most consistent team in the MAC this year. They've won the league four years in a row in the regular season. This is the year that Todd Kowalczyk gets to the dance. They win no. the conference tournament to Toledo Rockets. They're in too hard of a. If they're on the south side, I might agree. I disagree. Uh, Damani, I think, is right. I'm going Ohio, and I'm going Bowling Green. I The top side of that, I can see any four of those teams getting to the championship game. Um, to, Bowling Green already beat the shit out of Toledo. Toledo just beat the shit out of Kent State. I actually would be terrified. That's a rivalry game. I can see Kent State figuring it out and giving them a, a hell of a game. Central Michigan's the the new the new girl in the at the at the party. But uh <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're they they've played good this year. But yeah, bowling green and Ohio are my plays. Mac, what are you doing here? Yeah, we're gonna have a uh this thing's gonna get busted open real quick. Kent State over Toledo. Yeah, what a bad what a bad horrible how did draw. they draw Kent State? That's a horrible draw. <laughs> oh <laughs> they man, just played like like how, three days ago. How is, yeah. How is it a horrible draw again? I don't understand. So the, they the rivals. Yeah. It's in Cleveland. Uh, they're not Third bowling green rivals, though. So well, they bowling beat, green's the next game. They won at Kent State by 14, and then they won at home against Kent State by 15. Neither of the games time. were close. It's the third time it's in Cleveland. I like and they just played. I don't they I don't. just played. They played five days ago. Uh, Kent State gets it done. You I got gotta Kent hate State that angle Akron. to play the Akron same team. Yeah. I mean, I look, I'm definitely taking Kent State to cover because I just think you can make adjustments. Watch the film and make the adjustments and stuff to try different methods because you just fucking played them. Yeah. Kent State's been good at home. They have not been good on the road. They're basically at home. Yeah. Kent State's not basically at home. Akron's R basically at home. Richie Rich is saying it's Akron. Man, I was all over Akron. You had Kent asked me mid-season. Are right next to each other. Kent's Eastern more. Akron is still close to Isn't it Cleveland. like 20 minutes outside of Cleveland? No. I'm looking so. right now. Kent State's an hour away from Pittsburgh. I mean, it's still not that far from Cleveland. What, 45 minutes, maybe? Hour? I'm looking. I mean, I don't think you're right now. Kent State's 46 minutes south. Yeah, that's that's nothing. They're 12, the campuses are 12 miles from each other. Akron yeah. and Kent. Yeah, good luck. Good luck, Toledo. Because <laughs> I think Bowling Green in the second round is a yeah. fucking terrible draw, too. If it's they play, they better draw. hope Central Michigan wins. They're getting all their rivals. They've I lost to the Central this year, too. <sighs> yeah, what's what's that? This is gonna be fascinating. What what's the uh what's the next one? Last bracket of the year. We finish it off with <laughs> the private school, school postseason. postseason. <laughs> Played wow. at Columbia, by the way. Uh, the odds on this. Do I even have the odds on this? So, would you take odds on this little bracket that only allows four of their fucking teams in, or would you take odds on the triple buy bracket? I hate the triple buy bracket. At least these are like I hate you know, this. No, this is still better than the other one. Um, Cornell Yale's fascinating, fascinating game. Yeah. Uh, even Brown who beat Yale the other night, but uh. 
I don't have any odds. Do you have odds for this? Yeah. Like the, Brown, Prince, hey, the, Brown, the Brown guys end up having a good year, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so Prince plus the 100. Four. Yale plus 200. Cornell plus 350. Brown 20 to 1. Princeton's what? What was Princeton's? Plus 100. No way. No. They're yeah. not winning it. They're not winning it. Oh. Yale. I'm with you with Yale. Let's go. Yale lost him in heartbreak fashion. Yeah. They're getting it done. Revenge. Yale is yeah. a play. See, I, I I like that idea. I mean, Princeton upset Yale last year, and Princeton hosted the tournament, so it was unfair for the Bulldogs. However... Princeton's a team I want in the NCAA tournament. I think they're fucking dangerous. With Xavier and Lee and company, I, I saw these guys live. Like, I think that's another, just like they did last year. I think they're another one of these double-digit seeds that have a chance to go far in the NCAA tournament. I hope they get through. Plus 100 is not something that I want to bet on. No. I'm actually going to tell you to take the 20-1 to 1 on Brown. In a two-game setting, I think that's ridiculous. The brown guys. Yeah. Mm. Imagine yeah. if they want it. <laughs> It'd be great. Uh, all right, folks. I've been talking on the mic for a long time. Subscribe to the college basketball experience. I see 600 people in this bitch. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Um, give Noah Bina a follow on Twitter at Noah B 77 underscore. Moneyline Max on Twitter at Moneyline underscore Mac. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. The College Basketball Experience is on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. And uh, also, make sure you subscribe to the Big 12 College Experience, the College Baseball Experience, the College Football Experience, and the FCS College Football Experience. Until tomorrow, folks, make sure you smash that like and subscribe again. This is the College Basketball Experience. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. Off, so I can't be found. I'm on a worldwide tour, touring every fucking curtain down. Down, down, down. They say the Lord watches over my sins, over my head, watching hair as it thins, over the ledge, and ain't letting me in. There's still regiments and relevance to letting me win. Win, win, lose, or draw. You ain't prepared unless you are ready to lose it all. Losing a bra? Yeah, that's a ride of day. Good friends know my Nina Hideaway. They came and went, but the riders stay. So it's like I won the lottery and can't be found. Until I resurface with the latest purchase. 33 and a third and 45 circles. You ain't got that shit. And I ain't 45 king. But on the beats, I've been doing my thing. I start the program and the doorbell ring. I gotta leave town to a place I can't be found.